For the first proposition of Book 2 of Euclid's Elements, if there be two straight lines, and one of them be cut into any number of segments whatever, the rectangle contained by the two straight lines is equal to the rectangles contained by the uncut straight line and each of the segments. Now, since we're starting the second book of Euclid's Elements, he gives us a couple more definitions. And we've actually used this first definition. Any rectangular parallelogram is said to be contained by the two straight lines containing the right angle. So if you had a rectangle, you can say that since these two lines, this line and this line, since they form this right angle between them, you can say that this rectangle is contained by these two lines. Now, with that in mind, let's focus on this first proposition. So we're given these two straight lines, A and BC. And basically what this proposition is saying is that if I were to cut this line BC randomly at let's say the points D and E, then the rectangle that can be formed by A and BC, or in other words, the rectangle contained by lines A and BC would be equal to the rectangle contained by A and BD plus the rectangle contained by A and DE plus the rectangle contained by A and EC. So in other words, if we were to create a big rectangle using A and the line BC, so we'd have some rectangle like this, then this rectangle would be equal to the sum of the rectangles that you can form within it. So in essence, this big rectangle here would be equal to the sum of these three smaller rectangles. So that is essentially what we're trying to prove here. And another way to look at this proof is from a more algebraic point of view. So if we consider this length here, little a, bd we can call little b, de we can call c, and ec we can call d. And I should note that the Greeks actually thought of multiplication as just taking two lines and forming a rectangle with them, where the rectangle, its area, is essentially the product of those two lines. So one way of looking at this proof is that we're essentially taking A and multiplying it by the line BC, but the line BC is just B plus C plus D. So this is equal to this line A times B plus A times C and plus A times D. And you might recognize this as the distributive property. So this first proposition is essentially proving the distributive property. So now that we understand that, let's get into the proof. And we wanna start by using book one, proposition 11, to construct a line that's perpendicular to the line BC, but through the point B. So this line, which we can call BF, is perpendicular to the line BC. And with this line, what we wanna do next is cut out a portion of it using book one, proposition three, such that the line A would be equal to this new cutout portion, which we can call BG. So let's say this point here is G. And then through this point G, we want to use book one, proposition number 31 to construct a line parallel to the line BC, but through this point G. So let's construct that line. And we can call this line GH. So we have that GH is parallel to the line BC. Now from here, we again want to use this book one, proposition number 31, but now we're gonna use this line BG, and through the points D, E, and C, we'll construct lines that are parallel to BG. And we can label these points, K, L, and we can just call this H. So what we've done is just constructed lines parallel to BG. So DK is parallel to BG, and also EL is parallel to BG. 
And since both of these are parallel to the same line, then they're also parallel to each other. And that is actually book one, proposition number 30. And these are also all parallel to the line CH. Now, since we've constructed all of these rectangles or parallelograms, then from here we can write down the relationship between this big rectangle and each of the smaller ones. Namely, that this big rectangle, which I'll call BH, so the rectangle BH, I'm just using the opposite points in the rectangle to distinguish it, that this rectangle is just equal to the sum of these three smaller rectangles. So BH is equal to the rectangle BK, so rectangle BK, plus rectangle DL, that's this middle one here, and plus rectangle EH here. And we're almost done with the proof, but we need one more piece of information before we can finish it. And we already know that line A is equal to BG. So let me rewrite that, that line A is equal to line BG. But since all of these are parallelograms, we know that within a parallelogram, opposite sides and opposite angles are equal to each other. And that is book one, proposition number 34. So in this parallelogram here, BK, BG, and DK are opposite each other, so they must be equal. And since DK is equal to BG and BG is equal to A, through common notion one, we know that A and DK are equal. And you can use the same argument for EL and CH, since they're just part of parallelograms. So A is also equal to EL and CH. So now we have everything we need to finish the proof. And from here, it's basically just recognizing that this rectangle BH, we need to prove that this is formed by the lines A and BC. And we already know it's contained by the lines BC and BG, but BG is equal to A. So we can rewrite this as the rectangle contained by A and BC. And the way I'll write that is by using a cross. Since the Greeks really did think of the, forming these rectangles as multiplication. So that's why I've chosen this X. So we have this rectangle BH that's contained by the lines A and BC. And this is equal to the rectangle BK. Now BK is contained by the lines BD and BG, but BG is equal to A. So we can write that as the rectangle contained by A and BD. And then we add to that the rectangle DL. But DL is contained by DE and DK. And DK is equal to A. So we can say that the rectangle DL is just the rectangle contained by the lines A and DE. And this final rectangle here, EH, this is the rectangle contained by the lines EC and EL, but we know that EL is equal to A. So the rectangle EH is the rectangle contained by the lines A and EC. And if you consider that this line BC is just BD plus DE plus EC, then you can see that our final result is very similar to this distributive property, just written in more geometric terms. So this right here is our conclusion. So we can say QED to finish the proof.